Hello, my name is Fran Sands and this is MyBoxingCoach.com. Um, this video has the has the title um, Seven Footwork Tips to Avoid. Um, and I made this video because uh, look look the internet uh, is an amazing thing and, and YouTube is 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 an amazing thing. Lots of advice out there. Some of it really good, um, some of it pretty useless, and uh, there's some in a, in a, in a just a, a downright dangerous category as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, I, I have a little bit of a thing about boxing. Look, if, if someone gives out bad advice about golf, then uh, a golfer's handicap is, is, is affected. If someone gives bad advice out about tennis, then I don't know, maybe their forehand is effective, maybe their corporate friends get one over on them, you know, I'm sure that's devastating in, 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 in someone's sort of view. If you give bad advice out in boxing, people get hurt, okay? People get hurt, and it always sort of really upsets me when I see advice that if it were given to, for instance, my son was involved in boxing and and I felt that a coach was giving him some of this advice, it would terrify me, okay? So I wanted to just produce a video, I've been round and I've had a look round and I'm not gonna, you know, name or point out any specific, but I've seen all of these things and some of them are in the three categories, some of them are what I, well, what I describe as, as fairly useless and, 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 and some I think are just gonna get you you're knocked out. <laughs> you know, if, if you're in the game to get knocked out, good luck. Just don't come to this gym, okay? Find somewhere where your uh, your willingness to put yourself in harm's way is more appreciated. So, um, so about me, just just so you know about me and, and why I think I'm qualified to, to make this video. So I came in this gym when I was six years of age. I boxed competitive for the next 13 years. I had about 60 fights, represented my country at under-19 level, a couple of years out, and then for the next 20 years I've been a coach. So I've coached all kinds of boxers, from brand new novices coming through the door, and I've coached them right the way through. Some of them are operating in the pro ranks, national champions, international boxers, or, you know. Um, and I've worked with lots of other coaches. I've seen how lots of other coaches work with, with a community. Um, so I feel qualified, and, and some of the st all of the stuff that I point out today, I, I I would never see be coached in this gym or, or or any other that I've been to. That's my position. You know, have a go in the comments section if you want. That's fine. I'm just giving you my background as to why I think I'm qualified to put together this video. Okay. Now it's enough of the enough uh, enough of me boring. You. Let's get on to these seven tips to avoid. Okay. The first one is what people would have described as the shuffle step. And let me show you what, what I see demonstrated. This is what happens. Okay. I think this is a classic case of style over substance because it looks nice, doesn't it? Looks nice right there. Nice and rhythmic, okay? That is actually considered a fault in footwear. So a coach who runs a gym or is involved in a gym like this one would criticise and would stop a individual doing that particular move. Why? Because the stance narrows. And the stance narrows to a point where at its closest point your feet are virtually together. If you take an incoming shot when your feet are like that, you're either going to hit the canvas or you're going to go stumbling across the ring like the village idiot. Okay? It may not look as nice, but remain fight effective. That's going to be a theme throughout this video. Remain fight effective. For every second you are in a ring, if you're especially in, a, in an amateur capacity, or even look white collar, you need to remain fight effective. You need to be able to throw shots and defend yourself for every second. So rather than doing that, okay, do it properly. Go forward with your stance, maintain, okay? Hands high, maintained distance between the feet. Don't bring your feet together, okay? Common fault, shuffle step. 
Number two is the extended step, I call this. And this is just the principle of people coped or giving advice out to try and cover what I believe is too much ground, okay? Look, I'll, I'll use the punch bag. I'll even turn south for you, not know, something I ever do. I am in range to land both shots, okay? I am out of range now, okay? Look how far my feet move. Now look down, okay? In range, out of range. Look at any pro fight you see on telly, any of the top guys. They move this far. So here's, here's, here's what happens with this extended step. What I see people doing is saying, okay? Push forward and then throw your punch. Well, they often do it with the jab. So what you get is, okay? Too much ground getting covered. That's what you see. The reality is, that's what you see top guys doing. They move forward that much. Less distance, safer, more effective, more efficient. That far, not that far. Don't try and cover too much ground. The next one I call a silly sidestep. And it's this. Look, I've seen all these videos, and some of them have got like views half a million and, and, and above. Okay. This is this, the next one. Well, what, what is that? Okay. The tip about remain fight effective. That's not fight effective. Okay, feet are coming together. You know, people, this is the thing, I think, I think some people who post on the internet maybe watch a professional fight and they see pros sometimes stepping away and doing stuff like this, okay? But no coach will ever coach you to them. And these guys are operating at that level. They know, to some extent, when a boxer is way out of range, I could care less what they do. They can do some hip-hop, they can do the do -si do they can do the can-can in many ways. I don't care, but you make sure you're miles away from the opponent, right? miles away, because it will. you have no idea how quickly a top fighter can cover the ground to close you down and put you under pressure, okay? Remain fight effective. If you're going to move sideways, do so holding your stance, okay? Much easier to go that way than that way. But we'll come on this. Yeah, we'll come on that and on to that in a minute. Um, back pedal, and that's this one. Okay. I loved Muhammad Ali. I mean, I just found him the most amazing boxer. But I think that's one of the legacies he's left the game. Now, you know, if people are actually coaching others or encouraging others to to do the that back pedal and a bit of a problem. It, it adds nothing. Look, it just it doesn't add anything substantive to, to what you're trying to achieve, which is win a boxing match. Okay, um, it looks good, but you get nothing from the judges. In fact, you're more likely to alienate a judge by that type of they'd consider it showboating, and they'd be more likely to take a dislike into you and less likely to give you a, a scoring ground. So. Trying to avoid it. The next one's really interesting, it's called a switch step. And listen, every boxer does this. Um, but very few, if any, would be coached to do this. Here's what it is. You've engaged with an opponent, you've fired your shots, and you step away and you do that. I'm hiding behind the back, okay? You fire your shots, step away and do that. So you see what happens with your feet there. One, two, three, four. And away and do that. Now, what it is is actually a cheat. It's a because as a boxer, it's much easier for me to move that way in the direction of my lead foot. Much easier for me to do that. So, so as a boxer, I can I can really work that way dead easy. But when I go back that way, it's much less. So, okay, I've got to try and maintain that stance. So, boxers often use this as a little bit of a cheat to change the angle and go out that way, which is not a problem, okay? All I'd say, make sure you're out of range, number one, a few tips. So 
So as you push away, make sure you're out of range before you do it. Number two, don't bring your front foot too far back. So don't end up in this position, okay? Because again, you've lost your stance. If you're gonna do it, bring your foot back a little bit. Okay, there. There. So that you've still got your stance there and you can still fire shots coming that way, okay? Going back to Ali, another way of, 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 of moving that way and would be that. <laughs> Ali used to do that a lot, he'd be standing in front of the opponent and he'd be there. And when he moved that way, he just switched his stance so that his focus of attack would be there even though the opponent's here. Still allows him to throw shots off, okay? So that one's not too, you know, it's it's not dangerous, it's just got to be done like that. It just, just generally doesn't get coaxed, but there's a couple of tips. If you're going to use it, fine. But just remember those little tips to, to maintain your stance. Right, these next two. I'm sorry, these just scare me. And, and I, I watched these and I, and I could scarcely believe it. Half a million views this video had that these, these tips were on. Okay. This first one was called Learn to Walk. The principle being that you're standing engaged in a contest, you're exchanging shots with an opponent, and then you just decide to walk away like that. You know, what's wrong with this picture? I just decide to start walking away. I'm engaged in contact. As soon as I start doing that, I promise you that opponent will drive down my throat with all six or seven shots. And I'll be off balance and I can't defend and I can't fight. Okay? When you're backing away from an opponent, you back away under control. You maintain the stance. It's a core principle of boxing. Maintain the stance. Don't walk away. Alright? You get bingoed big time, okay? And the final one, it's just beggar's belief this one. And it's there, you can go find, you'll find this one, okay? So you're in a stance, and apparently if you put your ha ha arms like that, it makes you better in terms of balance, okay? Right, let me just switch off my common sense for a moment, all right? Let's assume that it does, all right? Now I believe I can train boxers and whether their arms are there or whether their arms are there, it doesn't matter. Their feet are balanced appropriately regardless of the arm position. Okay, that is a fact. Let's assume that you get better balance by doing that. What do you think an opponent's going to do if I come walking towards them like this? The one and only correct answer. He's going to knock me out and I'll deserve it for being an idiot, okay? Boxing is about risk versus benefit, as a lot of things in life are. The benefit you may get from an improvement in balance is far outweighed by the risk of getting knocked out cold. When you move into range with a, another fighter, them hands are up and the guard is tight, okay? Hands are up, Guard tight. That's it. That's that's seven seven footwork tips to avoid. Look, boxing is a logical business like lots of things in life are. Look at something. Challenge it. I want all of the boxers in this gym to think about what they are told by us as coaches and I want them to challenge it internally. I want them to think about it. Why is that done that way? What are the risks? What are the benefits? Can I make it better? Can I make it better? That's the responsibility of the boxers, to think more. We coach, we set them on a journey. Most boxing is learning by doing. Okay? If things seem bonkers, if things seem dangerous, if things seem like they'll get you nothing but trouble, then they will. You've got a, an innate understanding of these things as a sensible person. Okay? My name is Franz Sands and this is myboxingcoach.com.